Welcome to the Utility Safety Podcast. Today, I have with us Mark Taylor, who's a CUSP, and I am the host, uh, Nick Leonardi. I'm the Marketing Creative Director for Utility Business Media. Um, Mark, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks for for taking time out of your day. We know you're extremely busy. You know, we just wrapped up not too long ago. Uh, you know, David spoke at the IOTA conference and it was actually my first IOTA conference that I had been to and it was a great experience. So thank you for having us. Thank you for attending. You know, it, uh, incident prevention has been a uh, big sponsor or vendor for us and over the years, especially all the years that I've been, majority of the years that I've been going to IOTA. So we really appreciate uh, the support of all the vendors and especially IP and allowing David to speak at it as well is it's phenomenal to have some of those speakers. Yeah, well, I think our goal is, you know, just like yours, is to advance um, safety culture, um, get people home safe, and try to reduce those numbers um, that seem to be, you know, kind of stagnant over the last few years with the with the numbers. So we, you know, we have a lot of new workers um, coming into the workforce that are younger, that uh, you know, learn differently, uh, respond differently. Bill always says, uh, I'll give a plug for Bill Martin here. Um, we kind of were in a command relationship, you know, command control. And today it's it's a lot different. And uh, we need to make sure people are getting home to their families um, as well as getting the work done. So you kind of, um, I believe you're the board chair. Is that correct for IOTA? That's, that's correct. That's correct. So, you know. Going into this conference will be my last year. Okay. 2025. So who will, uh, well, I guess we can get into that later to uh, take the reins from you. But, um, you know, I don't know a lot about you. I've, I've heard your name. I've seen your name. Obviously, I've met you um, at IOTA, and now we've been talking a little bit more. And can you share a little bit with our listeners about your background and how you got started in the industry? Sure. So my name's Mark Taylor. I'm from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Live, lived here all my life. Um I was, uh, I started as an apprentice electrician out of high school. I was working on a lot of oil and gas jobs in Alberta through my apprenticeship. Um, but really what happened is, is it was about 86. I hate to kind of take you way back in time, but uh, we had the oil, the oil boom bust and all of these uh, plants got shut down and, and, and all that new construction stopped. Um, so, I went to the city of Calgary electric system um, to continue on as an electrician and um, <clears throat> they put me out on the laboring crews. They didn't kind of stick you in as an electrician right away. They stuck you out on the laboring crews, which were supporting the power line crews. And uh, so I did that for a few years and then I tried out to be a power lineman, uh, went through the selection process and got selected. Um, we were supposed to start on a Monday and on a Friday, they shut down the apprenticeship program for them. Years, oh man! So I was saying, back to the ditch and went right. Yeah, went back to the went back to the to the back into the laboring field, and there I, I kind of progressed through. You know, I, I became a lead hand or a foreman, and then into a supervisor's role, and then eventually got uh, promoted into a manager role. Um, then about that time, the apprenticeship power line apprenticeship program started back up again. Was well, it's kind of like okay, like this is like gonna go back and start all over again. Like I'm now a manager and and this and that. Yeah. So I kind of kind of left that dream of being a power lineman and electrician behind and and kind of moved into the management role. Um, in the management role, I'll tell you this: we the, the civil works department, as it was called, that's that's a labor group. We had the worst safety record in in the city of Calgary. Like we were, we were terrible. We were hurting people left, right, and center. And and I was watching this and I, and at the time, the safety department, and you know, and I'm, I'm not dumping on them by any stretch of the imagination. Um, they were kind of like police, you know, they, they, they didn't come out and coach. They just kind of came out and, you know, they, they were involved in a lot of discipline and stuff like that. And, and workers weren't really taking safety that Seriously, anyway, I'll, I'll say back in the in the nineties, right? And uh, so, 
kind of thought about this as, as a supervisor and manager, and I thought, really, safety is my responsibility. If I actually care about my people and I show them that I care, um, <clears throat> maybe we can stop some of these injuries. And so, like I said, we had the worst safety record. Um, and we started to turn the ship around. Really, and a lot of it was by caring and, and getting guys bought in. What was working, what wasn't working, what were kind of maybe some safety rules that I, that we weren't following and why weren't we following. Um, and I, and I got the guys to commit to safety and I, um, really got them. We started pre-work stretching, um, in the morning, to kind of stop the, stop the soft, uh, soft tissue injuries and all that. Um, mm-hmm. so we ended up going, um, we went from the worst to the best. We had the absolute safety record we, in that time. We transitioned to a private, kind of a private utility. Um, they do, we had deregulation and everything else. Um, we ended up going 10 years without a recordable incident. And wow. it was just, you know, like we had people going like, how were you doing this? And are you, you know, and, and, and enough so that people were would turn around and say, Hey, are you guys covering up injuries? And I'm going, mm-hmm. I don't see anybody with a broken leg. I don't see anybody with a broken finger. I don't, I don't see people <laughs> being wheeled in stretchers. I mean, they all look healthy to me. Um, but it was just this culture that we shifted where we bought in and we actually cared about it. and yeah. where we, we really truly had one another's back. So, um, that was kind of where I got to. And then and I, I was really happy in that role and, and loved it. And then, um, what happened is we had a fatality and a young apprentice, first year apprentice, um, died and all of a sudden it was kind of looked at like, we got to change a bunch of programs and. So what happened there was I was asked to take on the role of director of field resource development, um, which included uh, the apprenticeship program, the trades training program, the work methods program, and field safety. And kind of let's how do we shift this all around and and bring in kind of what you've done in civil works? How do we bring this to everybody else? Um, and I was in that I was in that role until I left. Uh, I leave ninety or. 2019, sorry, 2018 or 2019, I left. Um, I retired from NMAX and uh, had 35 years in and 55. Wow. And it was one of them things, right? And uh, they wanted to kind of shift some stuff around. And <clears throat> so I left there. And uh, from there, I uh, retired for three months. <laughs> <laughs> word, word to the wise, never retire in Canada in the winter. Word to be <laughs> <laughs> isn't it always winter out there <laughs> you know so i i think i left i think i left there the end of september and it snowed the day i, I left there and didn't let up yeah <laughs> well um uh, i was kind of searching around uh, to maybe do something different and uh a friend of mine that had worked at the utility um he had gone to this uh contractor um, primary engineering and construction, and he was the president and CEO up there. And, and him and I worked on a on a deal for me to come over here. And it was really only supposed to be a two year deal. And then I was going to really give it up, right? I was going to say, okay, I'm done, done. Yeah. And now yeah. I was going to be done at 57. And uh, <laughs> that didn't happen. We uh, <laughs> it, it was one of them. It, and the funny story was it was a two year contract. And my wife said when I was she looked at the contract, she was going, what happens if you like it? Like you got to leave after two years, so we just left that open ended. I've now been here just about five, and have no no idea when I'm leaving. I yeah. actually I love what I do. The company treats me phenomenally. I can't, you know, I can't say enough positive things about the company. But maybe kind of get me a, to the IOTA pro program. Um, so we had this fatality and I was reaching out to a bunch of different utilities and I really didn't have a lot of utility contacts. Had some up in Canada, had none down in the U.S. And um, somebody put me in contact with a trainer out of Idaho Power. And I talked to him and he says, you know, you should really join IOTA. And I'm kind of like, I don't don't even know what IOTA is. Um, IOTA didn't really have a web page at the time. Um, but he got me in contact with Amanda Sargent and John Lowe. And they were the recording secretary and that she was recording secretary and John Lowe was president. I had several conversations with them and I was just like, wow, what an organization. 
and they were like, hey, you should come, you know, come to our conference. And uh, and it was in Charlotte. Okay. Cool. I've never been to Charlotte. Well, Let's go. And, uh, you know, I figured I'd try it and, and see what it was like. But I got to tell you, I was never welcomed by a group. That was, please, I get there and I will probably ask more a little bit about this, but I sat at the back of the room because I didn't know anybody. And uh, from Canada, <laughs> I'm the only Canadian there. Um, and I'm kind of like, well, God, I don't really want to ask some questions. And like they welcome me with open arms. Like it was kind of like this, but they do this with everybody, right? Like it'd be everybody that's new. And it was kind of like they really wanted you to make, you know, make you feel welcome and everything else. And uh, at one point they were asking some questions and they kind of, I always, I love it this way. You know, do one of the things I love about IOTA, and I've learned this from from a lot of the past folks, and I mean, is it's flexible. So, yeah, we have a list of speakers and 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 that and and program, but there is some flexibility in there. And we we got ended up getting into a discussion on um, kind of where tailboards were going and everything else. And uh, next thing you know, I'm sitting up at, uh, on the stage in a round table. <laughs> I'm at a first conference. Holy cow! Um, but out of there, I met all these folks, and, and, and there were some incredible folks like Bill Bo Marianic and Cook Dairy, and a bunch of the guys from Tico and that. And I started reaching out to these folks about okay, rubber glove rules, and they were sending me everything. And so they'd send you, you know, like the rubber glove rule. They were sending you, um, I think, all these procedures and everything else. So in my Five years that I was at IOTA, while I was with NMAX, um, I brought home 45 ideas, work methods, or procedures. And I mean, it was, that's work that we didn't have to do, where um, I remember Bo Marianic telling me uh, he did one on, oh, geez, I'm going to forget since I forgot it now, but it's it's really about vehicle securement and, and how all your tools are, are in there. And uh, so, Bo, I'm sure you did a presentation on this. And, uh, and he said, yeah, I'll send it to you. And he says, just take our letterhead off, put your letterhead on, and you're good to go. He says, you might have to convert some of the pounds to, to kilograms and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, the measurements and whatnot. Yeah. And, um, but but the body work was done, and that's that's really um, IOTA's piece is, is to stop the duplication of work um, and, and share everything. I brought that back to NMAC saying, you know what? Um, we're building apprenticeship programs right from the ground up. We were building two, one for the power system electricians and one for the uh, power lineman. Oh, it's, sorry, three and one for the MBTO program, the mobile boom truck operator. And they were saying, you know, we want to trademark this and market it and sell it. And I'm going, and I, I was like, no, 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 no. These are my trading blocks. These, these are the ones that, but I really need something from another company and we get by order all of a sudden an email shows up with hey you guys need i need this or they need that i said if we start selling then you know there and there are utilities out there that do sell their programs and it was i, I don't think that's right when it comes to safety no you'll stop and you also stifle the the sharing that's so freely going on and uh sharing is is power you know we we do a lot of free things, you know, as you know, like the IPI forum and we get experts on there that people can share and ask questions. And um, it's important that we do that. And for the industry, you know, there's a lot of people really passionate and, and I can tell with you that you're passionate about safety. And I think that's why you had such a big impact, you know, knowing from what you just said at your first kind of utility and, and stopping a lot of these injuries soft tissue injuries and whatnot it it's important we share knowledge and uh we try to do that from our end you guys try to do that from your end and i think it's important to do that and one of the things that we talked about before this podcast was you know there is no osha in canada um canada kind of from what i understand you know and you correct me is they each province has its own little rules and and stipulations and so that's got to make it challenging there is no governing body that's saying hey here's the you know right way to do xyz yeah. and so sharing is probably ever more so important for the utilities and contractors up there yeah and it you know and it and it depends so we have can ulc and that's a, like a 
kind of a they write a bunch of the the code and everything else. Okay. Uh, and then it, but then some of it's very open ended, right? And uh, like I look at your limits of approach or your mad distances. I think you you folks call them. Mm-hmm. They, they left the new one very open ended, and I was just like, you know, and it's, so our workers are come back to me and they're going so. Now we got to work with the utilities, and now we got to do these L ratings and everything else. And I'm going, you know what? Um, I believe that the standard that's coming out is lessening. It, they're trying to make it a little bit, uh, your distance is a little bit smaller. I said, so I'm of the opinion right now that we stay with the distances we have, that we've got them written down and everybody knows. And why would we let it, if, if they're working for it, why would we lessen the distance between the art or the, the art flash or, or the hazard and the work. Why would we lessen? That? So that, that's kind of where I got to. And so then you've got, you've got work safe BC. So in BC, that's the governing body. We have occupational health and safety in Alberta. I think we got work safe uh, Saskatchewan, work safe Manitoba. And then you got <laughs> Ontario's got their, so those are all the province that we're in. And, and it's, it's tough kind of keeping up from safety director, manager position as we're working in these different provinces. So you, you, you are going in and you're digging in, figure it out. But I have, I have learned that um, BC and Ontario provinces are about the strictest. And if we really watch what's going on in them and, and, and modify across our company, um, that will be fine in the prairie, so to speak. But I, I do find Ontario and BC are very strict. <laughs> They're, hey, hey fair enough. I mean, I, I, we've heard some stuff and, uh, you know, it's just, it's interesting how the U S does things and in, in Canada and different approaches to, to safety. You know, that's, we talked about how you kind of got into IOTA. You started attending the conferences and, and the value that you received from that, from attending those conferences and the knowledge, what made you join the organization? You know, you're now the, the board chair and, and stepping down, like you said, Shortly, how how did that happen? How did you get approached to do that? Uh, well, <laughs> I always want to say nobody else wanted to do it, but um, <laughs> actually, I, I've been in a, you know I've been in, involved with IOTA for a number of years. I had given a bunch of presentations um, on, on different topics. I did one on electronic tailboards. I did one on fatigue management. I don't know, probably every conference I was doing another presentation, right? And uh, and uh, Bo Marianic came up and approached me and, and, and said, hey, um, you know, you get along with everybody here. And uh, I'd really like to, you know, we're, we've got somebody stepping down as a secretary. We'd re- I'd really like to put your name up as a secretary. And I was kind of like, um, okay, what's the secretary do right now? And I started, you know, I kind of got a little, started paying a little bit of attention to what the secretary did and I said, sure. And, and so it goes to a vote. Right? And, it, and so then I was really nervous there, put my name forward and I was really nervous again. At the time we were still the only Canadian member and we were still the only Canadian utility, right? And part of IOTA really wanted to grow into Canada. And I was talking to a lot of utilities up here about joining IOTA. And so I did that for a couple of years, and then um, Bo was going to step down. He had he'd been chair, I don't know, a couple of times over at, at different years. So um, I was elected chairman in 2018. In 2018, part of the bylaws state that you, uh, as, a, as a chairman, you must host an IOTA conference. So we were in Sturbridge in 2017. My name's up for election. We'd been talking to the membership for two years about coming to Canada um, for a conference. And we, we kept gauging it. But the other thing we also, you know, we, we had to work on some entry stuff, like passports and stuff like that, make sure people have passports. Yeah. So on 2017, I was elected as the president or chairman, sorry, of IOTA. Um, and the 2018 conference was going to be in Calgary, Alberta. <laughs> And uh, I was quite nervous again, really again, as as, as Canadian. Like, but I don't know why. Maybe that's just our nature, right? That, um, yeah, we nature. kind of get that way. But there wasn't a lot of Canadians. But we uh, we came up to uh, Calgary. It was one of the 
highest attended conferences in Iota history. We sold out an entire hotel and had to, the hotel was out looking to get other hotels in downtown Calgary and um, the vendors were, were awesome, right? So that's kind of, and I've been doing it. I was supposed to, you're supposed to do a four-year term. Um, through that four-year term, COVID hit. That had its own challenges. So we did not, we decided not to go remote during COVID. Um, we, we tried to host a couple of times um, and, and then got shut down. And really where we were supposed to go was to California. And, yeah. uh, so he said, said yes. <laughs> California has pretty cool spots. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, COVID policies in place. Mind you, I don't think I could have got out of Canada and back again. Uh, <laughs> they kept talking about it on our board meetings. How are we going to smuggle Mark out of Canada and smuggle <laughs> back? <laughs> by boat, <laughs> by air? <laughs> by boat. Yeah. They were talking about, you know, we'll stick you in the water in Lake Ontario. If you can get out to Toronto, we'll stick you in the water in Lake Ontario. Because, <laughs> uh, Scott Bond, who was our bender chair, he he lives in Waterton. I hate Waterton, New York, I'm just on the other side of Lake Ontario. He goes, and I'll just pick you up. And I'm going, well, like, I, can, I can swim, but I don't know if I can swim. Lake <laughs> so we uh, we finally finally got into California, and uh, my tenure was running. We had a board meeting, and, and we discussed uh, that my tenure and Patrick O'Brien and uh, who is the recording secretary for IOTA. And both of us decided, Hey, we'll throw our names back up for another four years. If everybody's cool with that, and, uh, we, you know, just kind of let's get through COVID. Let's get our, you know, as Scott always says, let's plant our flag. Let's get going again. And uh, so we, we were reelected unanimously. And I think at that point, everybody's just like, phew, we're going again. And, uh, so that's kind of brought me where, you know, kind of to the end of, of what we do there. But what we do at is really organizing the conferences. It is really kind of pumping out who do we want to speak at it? What do we want the theme to be? Always looking for vendors and host utilities, right? So the vendors at IOTA, the vendors drive it. Um, the vendors pay for everything. So by their registration, their fee that they pay that covers off the meals the room that we're in the conference room that we're in so really the members are only paying for their travel costs and their and their hotel room all their meals are covered all their time that they're on iota is covered right and that's by the vendors so that's you know we're we're eternally grateful to our vendors for for making this happen without them this it wouldn't happen or we you know have to charge registration fees yeah. so we do that um, my role is really to, to work with Scott and Pat and the rest of the team on, on finding speakers, finding topics, finding vendors, finding venue, uh, where to hold this. And, and probably the thing that makes me the most nervous about doing this role, and I love doing it, is the budget. Um, we're, we're a nonprofit. Yeah. We're a nonprofit. If we make money, let's say this this past year, if there was a thousand dollars left over, uh, we find a charity. Um, we work with the host utility and the host vendor um, and donate that money on behalf of them, whatever's left over. So every year we start at zero. <laughs> so every year I get extremely nervous about budget, about meal, about meals and everything else. And I think Scott Bond, the vendor chair, always talks me off the cliff every year. <laughs> um, and then we, you know, my other one is I must hold their bylaws. I, I, you know, and, and, and like anybody, we, we've got to pay attention to them on, on who's a member. And so to be a member, you know, you need to attend two meetings. You need to attend that in three years. Um, Pat does an excellent job on keeping up the mailing list. Um, but as people change companies and everything else, um, <clears throat> you know, we're, we gain members and we lose members. And uh, so our membership is always kind of fluctuating around and, and membership companies are always fluctuating around, but they do a pretty good job on that. And then, um, and then it, what they do as you are a member is, and, uh, is we send out, if you have a question, 
you guys discuss this in your on the webinars, the monthly webinars you guys. Yeah. So um, you guys get the questions as well, right? Uh, David gets the questions and and David has been great. He says, hey, can we post these calls? Certainly, certainly. And that anywhere we can drive where we're not, you know, and, and David, I, well, the IP people are the same way, right? As long as they're not duplicating, you know, duplicating efforts. So we put that out. You guys put it out on your webinar. And and the members get answers to their questions. And the other thing I have to do is um, put together a succession plan. Yeah. And prepare <laughs> for when you're gone. <laughs> yeah, I kind of put together. Otherwise, you're stuck here forever. Right? Not not that mind. Right. Um, but we we are full. We have a we put together an awesome succession plan this year. Um, so we've got Rich Parody who's going to jump in, and and he is going to be the the chair. 2026. Um, Stephen Kopp is going to come in and be the, the assistant chair. We even got an IT guy this year. Um, oh, and nice. <laughs> but, you know, because there we were, and and again, it, it was one of our vendors um, was doing our web page and, and paying for it and kind of updating and, and everything along that nature. And, and we truly appreciate them doing that. But we wanted to really kind of grow iota and, and and that was you know i've made that my mandate to to go it into canada and go it more into uh kind of the midwest states we're good on the east coast and we're good on the west coast but we kind of have that chunk of utilities and everything else down through chicago nashville georgia alabama and all that where we don't have a lot of members and and been trying to get our way into there and, and get members from there right and we actually got some new members this year from Texas, which is uh, which is outstanding, right? Um, yeah. But so anyway, we we got Josh, our IT guy, and and he's going to work on all the IT stuff, our web page, social media, you know, all that stuff that we don't. Want. You know, one of the questions I, I you know formulated was what challenges, and and to be honest with you, COVID for us even was a big challenge. You know, I know that's not what I think you had in mind, but I think for for a lot of the companies trying to support safety and their mission during COVID was a very, you know, it was a tough time. And, and, you know, I just imagine all the people that got to work from home while, you know, everyone else had to go to work, right? Utilities had to go to work. They had to be there. They had to make sure that the lights and the power were on. So, um, we appreciate that all you guys do at IOTA. Like I said, it was the first one. It won't be the last one. Hopefully, if I'm invited back, you know, it was it was a great time, and I learned a lot. And I, you know, I could see the passion of everyone there sharing their knowledge, um, their experiences, their their trouble at times. You know, which is probably the hardest thing to share is where you failed as a safety leader. Um, but I saw that, and people were were vulnerable um opened up and you know hopefully grew from that experience and learned one thing i i kind of i didn't think about asking but you know you're with you stepping down what are your plans after i mean obviously you're still going to be involved in iota but what's next for mark taylor you know um i i i will be the past chair and then be a member at large um have a few of those like Bo Marianic. Danny Range is uh, is a member at large, you know. I, so, but what kind of you know, these these guys are absolute mentors in the industry to hang around and, and gain knowledge from, and, and they give it so freely. And, and and really, that's what I see myself doing. Is um, yeah, I want to support Rich. I want to support Iota. I still want to do my work here at Primary, um, and I'm mentoring a young guy here who just got elected to the to the board and Mark Yetis. Um, so he got elected to the IOTA board. Um, so really, yeah, I, what's next for me is not fading off into the sunset. I, I don't look at, you know, if I didn't enjoy my job, I wouldn't do it. Right. Like I'm exactly. 60 years old. I can retire. But you know what? Um, I guess I don't want to yet. Uh, I tried it once. Didn't work out for me. Uh, <laughs> I think I think my wife would come home and I had set things to watch on TV in the middle of the day. Not soap operas, but I mean, there's some pretty cool programs. I like that Mountain Men and the, the guys who go. Oh, I love that show. I love that show. Ice Road Truckers. 
Oh, yeah, I throw truckers, all of them things. Right oh. there. It's a cool show. I had all them listed out every day when I was watching, right? <laughs> yeah. Man. I'm um, not going to do that. I think that's a waste of my talent, passion. Talent. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you on that. I, you know, I enjoy working. I enjoy what we do. And, uh, you know, if you're not passionate about what you do, how are you really going to change anything? And safety is something to be really passionate about. You know, I, I see it in the people that come to our conferences, the people that are at your conferences, people that I work with. Um, you know, it's probably the most important thing is the work they do um, and also making sure they get home to their families. And so I, you know, I, I respect it and and I truly am passionate about everything that we're doing. I can see that with everything you're doing. And IOTA's, you know, lucky to have you and, and take it, you know, over the, I think you said five years so far you've been. I think I've been longer to well, 20, 2018 was my first one. So 20, but oh, seven years, seven, seven years. years. Yeah. Never do math in public. I know. I don't do path and then private. Uh, that's, the wife <laughs> takes care of all that, you know? Yeah, um, exactly. And, and, and safety's changing, right? Like you get a good message Martin earlier and, and Billy, we've had him speak a couple of years, right? And he, you listen to his message and it, and it and it's really really resonating with me that here we are as, as safety professionals and I think he put it this way that we're doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different result and it's yeah. how's that working I think he asked a question at the last conference how's that working out for you <laughs> it's just like oh boy it's not it's not working out right and, yeah the numbers aren't aren't changing you know yeah and I you know, plateaued. And it's, it's really, I, I think, where we're getting to. And, and you know, David gave a, a speech on PPE. Um, always wear it and never need it. Uh-huh. Here I am, a safety professional. <laughs> I should, should probably not tell the story. But he was giving examples. He was giving examples. I was failing miserably. I just kept falling right back to PPE. And I was just like, holy. So I scribbled a whole pile of notes and took all that home, right? And took all that back to the primary. And we started working with our, our foreman on that. Yeah, and, and they were they were kind of failing miserably too. So we we know there's some of these topics where they're really making sense now that um, where we, where we need to get to right. So it's the PPE in the industry is phenomenal. The the manufacturers, these guys, the tools are yeah, absolutely never been better. Never been better. better. But we got to change the way we use it and the way we're thinking, right? And and uh, I, I look at it, that, you know, do I truly truly have my brother's back? Am I truly going to speak? And and that's the big push in our company right now is is, is speaking out. And um, Billy Gate handed out these cards. The not a lot of people took them um, that had the three R words on them there. And there yep. are, you will be hear these words. And uh, uh, Mark Geddes, who was uh, who I worked with here at Primary, um, our first foreman's meeting. That's what he rolled out. You hear these words, you need to stop immediately. And yep. We went and got our own little cards made up. So we thank Billy for that. And, and all of our foremen, actually, all of our workers have these cards. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. It, it's just really, we've got to change the way we think, right? And yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, something Danny Rains and I talked about this morning. That's kind of what our podcast was about was, uh, you know, test and verify. You know, don't just take someone's word for it that is grounded or it's, that line's dead, you know, verify that. It's okay to fact your foreman or your crew leader telling you something, verify it, you know, um, takes you, you know, a little bit extra time, but, and that's the thing I find interesting is that, you know, we, we often, it, it is a shortcut at times, right. To do, we're not thinking of it as a shortcut, but we we're stressed. We got, you know, two or three other jobs right behind this and we're trying to get the work done uh, quickly, efficiently. Um, and so someone says, hey, that um, that's grounded. That's good. You know, we take that, you know, for granted. We say, okay, they're, they're above me. They have a, a position of authority. Um, they're telling me it's good to go. I'm going to do my work. But if if you don't just take that extra little time to verify and you're for best case, just out of work for a little bit because you've, 
you know, hurt yourself or worst case, you die, right? Fatality. Think about how much lost work, let alone all of the personal struggle with family members and coworkers and what that's going to do to the safety culture at your company. Um, just take the time, verify, you know, and, and I think it's important that we keep, I mean, safety is always an important thing. I mean, everyone you talk to, no one's going to say safety is not, not that I've experienced at least anyways. And, um, so that's a good thing, but we also need to show action. You know, I think that was part of Bill's, his presentation was like, okay, what are you going to do on Monday? That's different. Right. And then you need to test and verify that it's making a difference. And if it's not, do something else. You know, yep. it sounds so simple, but I think it is that simple. You know, my, my son's a third year power line apprentice <clears throat> at, at, at primary. And uh, when he went into the trade, I said to him, I said, so it's your life. It's absolutely your life. Mm -hmm. um, you can't take anybody else's word for it. You need to check for yourself, double check for yourself. If you're unsure, you got to, you get that queasy feeling in your stomach or the hair on the back of your neck standing up or whatever. And it's, you need to shut her down. I said, yeah. you know, I said, um, been in this industry for close to 40 years now and been injured a couple of times. I can honestly say um, a couple of times that I was injured were my fault. Um, were kind of short at it. Um, one, you know, and, and a lot of it was Mako Taga, um, where I put a piece of paper over a light switch and say, do not turn on. <laughs> really like... You know, I don't know. And thankfully, the voltage wasn't wasn't you know as an as an electrician. It did. You know, it's under six hundred volts in that. Point. Um, that's what I told him. I said this this industry is unforgiving. If you have an incident, it's unforgiving. It's just, yeah. um, and I I don't know if everybody realizes that. And it's so that's where I kind of always say, you know, what you you need to test, you need to verify, you need to check and walk out. Each. All of these things need you need to do them because it's your life. You've got mom and a dad. You got some grandmothers still still around, and then you got a fiance. So um, and and the fiance said so. You, you need to do that. And um, my understanding from talking with the supervisors and stuff like that uh, in the field construction area is he's very good at. It. You know he doesn't. You know, or and I'm glad. I'm glad that message has resonated. Yeah. And I, and I think we need that message to resonate with all of our young workers. And as older workers, we shouldn't be looking at that as an insult. We say, hey, you know what? It's, been, it's dead and grounded. And they want to check it. We should be happy. A hundred percent. You know, and, and we should be encouraging that and, and say, hey, you know what? I told you what it was, but I think I probably need you to check. Yeah. I, something I've talked with some people on um bill being one again another plug um but the younger generation asks a lot of questions right they're they don't just do whereas the older generation used to say hey you know ground that set that primary you like you do um this younger generation was like asking a lot of questions why am i doing that and it's a different style but we, you're, you're absolutely correct. We should respect that. The older generation should respect that and say, hey, they want to be safe. They want to, you know, this is not what I'm used to, but I appreciate that they're thinking about this stuff and asking the question, and it's not a insult. And it's actually probably a very positive thing to do that. You know, so I'm glad your, your son's doing that, and it's important, you know, especially when you have family in there. I think as, as humans, we kind of, remove ourselves a little bit people will say i'll give you an example like oh it's not safe to go out by yourself at night in in downtown chicago right and, and you know that and until you see an incident where or maybe you know someone where a family member was affected oh they left a dollar bill on the windshield wiper which you've seen news reports for the, the woman goes to get it and then they rob her or attack her or until you see something like an incident or something happens to someone personally, a friend, a coworker, sometimes we know it's dangerous, but we kind of 
forget. It's not, it's important, but it's kind of in the, in the back of our brain where it should be front and center. You know, every day we should be thinking about that could happen and, and why we should be taking the extra steps, you know? You know, and I, I think you touched on something that, that's extremely important as well is, is, you know, they've got a lot of things on the go, like a lot of, you know, they've got job after job after job. Um, then workers are distracted. Um, we need, you know, everybody's got a cell phone. Now. Yep. But you don't know why they're distracted. Like, you know, they might be applying for a bank loan or they might, you know, um, something might be going on with a spouse or something along that nature. And I, I, you know, I encourage crew leaders to know their people, absolutely know their people that, when they're not on that day, ask them why they're not on. And, and you know, maybe it is as simple as, hey, I'm waiting for to hear from the bank to get a, a truck loan or something like that. That's why I keep looking at my phone. You know, we need it. Yeah. Well, if I'm that crew leader, you know what? Go over there, take five minutes, call them, get it sorted out, and then come back. To me. Hopefully, hopefully you're in a good mood. <laughs> true, true. Um. <laughs> but, but, you know, I think it's extremely important that work leaders know their people. And I, I, you know, I'm fortunate the company I work at right now, the managers and the supervisors really encourage that out of the foreman. Like you, you really need to know your people. And I, you know, and they keep talking and you hear people say it's family um, really here. They're pushing this to a level that um, it, it's encouraging to sit there and, and listen to them. Right. And, and, yeah. and they know, you know, when you know your workers, you know they're not on that day. Cut them a little bit of slack and try and find out why they're not on that day. <clears throat> and they'll come back to you. They'll, they'll, they'll give you, they'll give it to you tenfold over. I, I've always seen that. Um, sure, you got the odd person that plays the game and everything else and takes advantage of it. But generally, I firmly believe that that workers, you know, you cut them a little slack on the day that they're they're not a hundred percent on. They give it back to you tenfold over, right? Yeah, and it it it's a bond when you start to connect at a different level. It's not just I'm your boss or I'm your coworker. Um, you're gonna be looking out for that person. You know, I give you an example, kind of that I I remember with uh, someone I was talking with recently, and these guys and gals have a lot of windshield time. You know, they're in a bucket truck, they're driving to the next job or pick up whatever, and uh, person's driving what's that other person doing they're on their cell phone right they're looking yeah. whether it's work emails or or texting or whatever they're doing right yeah they're in the passenger seat but if you're you know this is a challenge i'll leave people with is if, if you're your brother or sister's keeper shouldn't you be looking out for that person while they're driving say hey you got someone coming in over here it may not happen all the time but you should be aware and alert at all times when you're on the you may not be on the job site, but you are working. You're on company time. And if we truly are, are you know, brothers and sisters keeper, then we should be looking out for them at all times, you know, that we're with them. I, I can tell you this story, and it's a personal story. Uh, this weekend, we did a run down into uh, Montana. So Montana is about a four and a half hour drive. The wives like to go down there and shop and everything else. And, and a buddy of mine that, and his wife that come with us, him and I like to drink beer. Um, so he kind of same, worked, same. worked out really well, but he sits in the front seat next to me, you know, he sits in the passenger seat and he is scanning for wildlife the entire time, the entire time. Now he's a, he's a hunter, right? So he's kind of looking, yeah. we're looking out for himself too, but you know, but it, that's what he believes his role is, right? It is, he's kind of like, you know what? I'm your extra set of eyes. You're, you're co pilot here. So, um, hundred percent. I love that. I just had to share that personal story because it's a, it, we just came back and it, it just kills me on the, on the four and a half hour drive there and back, right. That he's doing that all the time. It's so really at the end of the day, he's got my back, you know, where I yeah. got, I might it makes you feel good, right. You remembered that that's stuck yeah. in your mind as, as, Hey, wow, he's got my back. He's looking out for me. It meant something to you. And that's what I think if we can develop that connection with our workers you know, at a deeper level. And again, we all have problems, right? We all have personal stuff going on. Um, but just connect with them at a little deeper level may change the numbers at the end of the year. You know, that's what we're looking for. We're looking to reduce those numbers and get out of this plateau. Um, I think IOTA's doing that. 
uh, at your conference, IP. I know we're trying to do that here and at this podcast. It's just take that time to develop a little deeper level with a coworker, a family member, a loved one. Just try to try to connect deeper because it pays dividends, I think, in the long run. You're right. You're you're 100 right. And I, I mean, I, I I look at it, and the other one I would say, and I want to give a shout out to a few people here. Um, yeah. That, yes. um, if I could, but I mean, I, I mentioned Amanda, Amanda Sargent, Bo Marianic, John Lowe, Kirk Derry, uh, Danny Rains is huge. Jim Vaughn, Mac Turner, David McPeak, Carl Potter. These guys have given so much back to the industry. Um, they have helped my career immensely, absolutely immensely. I would not be in the spot I am today without these folks supporting me. Plus, I saw my guys at work, right? Only all, all my folks at the wow. and my people and my people at, at NMAX before that. But I really believe if we care about this, we need to share our stories. We need to share our insights. We need to share what's working. Um, and, 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 and do tell the stories about what's not working and, and, and so that we're not all sitting there, as I'll say, stuck in the mud, spinning our tires that, Hey, people have tried this and it's failed. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's failed. Let's forget it and move on to something else. And, and these people are, are industry leaders that, um, you know, if you get an opportunity to talk to folks like that, talk to them, they, they've seen an awful lot and, and I've never met groups of people so willing to share stuff in all my life i'm forever yeah, that, grateful to them. that was a memory i took away from iota was that woman i'm not gonna give a name or or a company or anything like that but she she broke down i mean she was in tears sharing her uh story of how she failed as a leader and and to be that vulnerable again no one likes to admit they're wrong no one likes to admit they made a mistake or they're, you know, I know I'm not, but to see that again, all for the better good of, of getting people home safe and people to learn from her experiences that that's powerful. That's what it's all about. You know, it is. And then, and, and, you know, um, she was telling her story <laughs> and I got to tell you, my head was going right back to probably 15 years earlier where kind of made the same mistake and. You know, I was just like, wow. I, I, you know, I went and talked to her afterwards on one of the breaks and just said, you know, I'm sorry you had to go through that. And I said, I made the same mistake 15 years ago. And she said, would you make the same mistake today? And I said, probably not. And I said, probably not. And I said, it, it, it's just, I said, but you bringing that story up? I said, I might have buried that, buried my story a little deeper. And But I said, holy cow, you brought that front and center. And and, and I love that when, when folks are, are willing to talk about stuff like that, right? And and share. Um, I love, you know, the, the one part about IOTA is we have the industry accident forum um, where we, we talk about industry accidents and people talk about, you know, get up and, and this is how we failed. And really that, you know, I've shared stories of that as well. And it, it's really to pass on the learning. It, it don't make yeah. the same mistakes that we made, right? And and people should be scribbling notes like crazy there because I, I we do make the same mistakes over and over again. So I, that's my that's always my favorite session. I think my my second favorite session at IOTA is is when you get to ask the question. You get to ask anybody in that room, whether it be a vendor, a member, what have you. You're trying to figure something out. I'm, I'm forever scribbling notes down on that one. This is like yeah, okay, this is a really good session. This is a little weird, you know. And I love it when we. And all of a sudden we're sitting there and I'll look up at the clock and I'll, we're supposed to be heading to a break or something along that nature. And it's just like, let her run, just let her run today. Like it's, yeah. we're going today. Yeah, it was, it was a great time. And, and, uh, again, thank you for having us, of course, and, um, look forward to being back if I'm invited. And, uh, You're invited. You got a standing invite. All right, you might, all have right. to, you might have to talk to David and see if David will bring you again, but you always got a standing. Invite. Well, true. I guess he's gotta be, uh, on board as well. But one of the last things I'd like to do a, a part two with you and dive a little more on some topics, you know, for utility safety, like mental health. And we all know mental health is, is a very important, not talked about enough topic that I think the industry is starting to 
shift on. I know Kate, our editor of Instant Profession Magazine, has tried to focus on this over the last year and a half or so. But I'd like to talk to you about that and what you've seen over your your working career. Again, I know you're really passionate about safety. I can tell that. And I think all of our listeners will be able to tell that. So uh, I invite you back to do a part two. And Cool. Before yeah. we head off of here, I, I got to do this. I got to give you yeah. one more show. Note. I got to do one more show. Note. The, Absolutely. The, these are these are the rock stars of IOTA. So, okay. Rich Jeremy, Steve Top, Patrick O'Brien, Mark Geddes, Scott Bond, Melissa Calhoun, Josh Bond, and Robert Bo Marianic. These guys are the folks are the absolute rock stars. They make me look amazing every day. So, I got to give them a shout out. They are the board and they are the future and they're absolutely outstanding folks and are extremely passionate about safety. Well, that's great. We we celebrate those people for, for their mission and uh, thanks for shouting them out. Um, we'll put a link to the IOTA conference in the description for folks that want to check it out. I highly encourage you uh, to do that and, and uh, look for Mark, you know, possibly at an upcoming IP conference as well as our part two uh, podcast series with you. Mark, thank you so much for, for taking the time out of your busy day. Thank you again for so much for having me. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Well, with that, we'll wrap it up and have a good day, everyone. The views, information, and opinions expressed during this podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of Utility Business Media and its employees. It is strongly recommended that you discuss any actions or policy changes with your company management prior to implementation.